Ebola outbreak is causing widespread panic among the local population. Health workers on the ground are saying now, four people in the eastern town of Mangina have tested positive for the deadly virus. Some one million displaced people live in the frontier zone of the country. And the World Health Organization Seth says that the geographical location of the outbreak increases the danger of spreading it. It's an active conflict zone, and so we'll be doing public health operations really across the front lines in order to stop this outbreak. The other factor that's concerning is, of course, it's very close to, to borders, and particularly here, the border with the country of Uganda. Well, I'm joined now by Dr. Oliver Johnson, who has participated in the fight against Ebola in Africa and is co-author of A Doctor and a Diplomat on the Ebola Frontline, a book that recounts his experience. Well, uh, Dr. Johnson, uh, thanks for joining us on the program. So this, first of all, it has been declared over already and now it's back. So it, clearly it is a, it's a very complex uh, situation to deal with. Can you tell us what is what has to be done next? Yeah, so I think uh, one of the things the World Health Organization uh, has said, Dr. Tedros, the Director General, that Ebola is a constant threat. It lives in uh, animal populations, and at any time, it can transfer over to humans. So that's why we're seeing a second, totally separate outbreak going on in a different part of the country. Uh, and it's a reminder that uh, this is going to be something we're going to see in the years ahead. And certainly from the West Africa outbreak a few years ago, which was by far the, far the worst Ebola outbreak we've ever had. There were some really important lessons that we learned. And I think one of the most important, and we talk about this a lot in our book, Getting to Zero, is that uh, you've got to work with communities uh, and not just do a response to communities. People are scared. They're suspicious. This is unheard of and it's terrifying. Uh, and then all of a sudden, foreigners come in and, and government people come in, uh, and you've got to win their trust. And I think that's going to be a particular challenge in an active conflict zone where trust may be in short supply. Yeah, so this is, uh, this is a bit of bad news that the Ebola outbreak is back. But on the, on the positive side, in recent years, we have seen progress in vaccines against Ebola. Is this likely to help this time? So um, we do have a vaccine that was trialed uh, very uh, successfully in the West Africa outbreak. It was used more recently uh, in the, in the uh, Congolese outbreak that ended recently. But it, we don't know that it works for all of the different strains of Ebola. We're still waiting to hear uh, what strain it is that's causing the most recent outbreak uh, declared recently. So I, I think we may have to look back to traditional techniques of controlling outbreaks. And, and the really important things there, they're going to be things like good leadership. And we're seeing that already. The government has come forward, has been open about this outbreak. They've, um, they've declared it publicly. The World Health Organization is you know, very early on uh, publicly uh, taking, taking ownership of the situation. Um, but it's also a reminder to us that once an outbreak starts, it's almost already too late because the conditions on the ground have been set. The numbers of doctors and nurses that you've got to work with, the health infrastructure, are there, is there running water in the hospitals? Are there gloves on the hospital wards? These are the things you need. And it's a reminder that we can't keep uh, bouncing from one crisis to the next, but we've got to do the long, hard work of building strong health systems. And of course, the other thing to remember is that in an Ebola outbreak, it's not just Ebola you've got to worry about. You've still got kids with malaria who need treatment. You've still got a woman who's in obstructive labor who needs a midwife or who needs a cesarean section. So we can't, keep our, we can't forget that in the middle of this Ebola outbreak, we've got to keep providing health care to everybody else in that population.